Earlier in the week, my son and I decided to take a trip up to see a SpaceX launch. And it's always been sort of a dream to go and see one. We've seen them from a distance a few times and certainly watched them on the internet a number of times, but it, it's been one of those things we wanted to do. So we, um, we took the time to drive up and as it turned out, there was supposed to be a launch at about uh, seven o'clock one evening. And uh, so we took off, drove up most of the way. I had my car charged to 100% and we just drove and uh, didn't worry about the specific destination, didn't worry about supercharging, just started driving. And uh, so we took a route, we found our way up. Um, I'd used uh, about 80% of the battery when we got there. Um, so, you know, we were at a point where, you know, we had a, between 40 and 50 miles left on the car, something like that. And uh, we stopped to watch the launch. And it was, um, you know, it was getting up to be about launch time and they postponed the launch for about two hours. And we looked at each other and we said, okay, what are we gonna do? Let's, um, maybe let's get something to eat and we can start heading home and uh, we can worry about it on the way home. And if we have an opportunity on the way home, because it's a couple of hours drive from where we live to be up at the Space Center or around that area. So maybe we'll get a chance to see it if they keep it on schedule and it actually launches at uh, nine o'clock. Then came the, uh, the fun part. We went ahead and picked up some dinner. We figured we'd grab something to eat, a sandwich or something, and then just go ahead and find a supercharger along the way and then just charge up to a reasonable amount and then go on our way. So here's the thing. We made a decision to just find the nearest supercharger because we didn't know where we were gonna go exactly. We were just gonna start driving back toward home. So I found the nearest supercharger. It was uh, maybe 10 miles from where we were or something. Put it in the GPS and let it route me there. So the system came up and said it was preconditioning the battery for supercharging. Great. So we get to the place and I'm like, well, how much charge do we need to put on it? I don't want to take it all the way to 100%. That's going to take forever. Maybe we take it to like, you know, 70 or 80%. I made a decision to go ahead and put home as the next destination. And when I put home as the next destination, as I was getting ready to charge, the system came back and said, okay, you'll need this much of a charge to, to get there. It was about 80%, which is what I expected. And so I started charging and I figured that would be a good amount to have in the car and that would get me close to where I wanted to go. Look, again, it was sort of flying by the seat of my pants. I didn't have anything specific I wanted to do in terms of the uh, distance I wanted to travel. I wasn't sure where I was going, so I wasn't gonna put a destination in there. So I went ahead and just charged to 80%. And the funny thing was, the, the car came back and gave me a warning message that I really should plan for supercharging so my battery is preconditioned. Now, because I had already driven to that supercharger and I had already gotten the message that the battery was preconditioning for supercharging, it was a curious message, but I didn't do it when I was saying I wanted to go home. So it gave me this error message and told me it would charge faster if I did it this way, which was just kind of curious. It was one of those things where I had to stop and think about why is it giving me this message? I went ahead and charged it that amount. We continued on our trip and we drove along uh, until we got to a point where it was about a half an hour before launch. And then we just headed out to the coast and caught the launch over in a, in a town called Hope Sound and went on the beach there and actually saw it. And it was a really cool launch. It was a lot of fun to watch and I was glad we finally got to see one. We'd been planning for it for a long time. It just never worked out timing wise between delays, the distance you have to travel to, uh, to get somewhere and the fact that oftentimes it's either overcast or the launch gets scrubbed or delayed. It just never worked out for the two of us to go. I've seen some launches, but never with my son like that. It just never worked out that way. So once we saw the launch, then it was time to head home. So I went ahead and put home back in the destination. And of course, 80% of a charge was not enough considering we'd taken this circuitous route to get somewhere. I needed to stop and charge one more time. So I stopped and charged on the way home. There was another supercharger. A uh, station I'd been to, it was a service station along the turnpike. And I'd been there a number of times in the past, but this time um, they had put supercharger sites in there. there. There didn't used to be a supercharger in there. In fact, the parking area where the superchargers are was a place I used to go sometimes when I needed to uh, to pick someone up from a bus. There's a, like a little bus terminal there, sort of. It's, it's an informal bus terminal, but that's where I'd park to pick up somebody at the bus terminal. So kind of a funny thing. It just turned out that those parking spaces aren't available for that anymore. Now they're available for supercharging. So anyway, um, went ahead and charged and drove the rest of the way home, no issues. So range anxiety? What's that? I didn't have any. What I was doing as I was driving along, just out of curiosity, a couple of times I popped up the map and looked for superchargers. Now, the map has changed. The entirety of the interface has changed. So looking for superchargers isn't as easy as it used to be. You used to just see them on the map. Now you have to actually do something to try to get to them. So it's a little weird and a little peculiar to try and get to all the supercharging sites. But I kept popping up the map to see where the nearest superchargers were. And there were so many, it really was no concern at all. 
I was gonna be able to charge, I knew that. It was just a question of how much I was gonna to have to put in the charge. Considering that I had no particular route in mind, I was just driving sort of randomly to get to somewhere, and if I got there, I got there, and if not, not then not. But I was happy to stop and charge along the way that way. It was a very kind of unusual trip that way because it was no planned destinations, and I knew I was gonna use a lot of the battery just getting to where I wanted to go. And then I'd have to come home. And I, as I had to stop again on the way home, it was kind of weird that it worked out that way. But I was glad it did because it really showed me that the, you know, the, the car itself is fine. No problems at all. It was easy to get there. It was easy to get somewhere else. It was easy to find the supercharging stations and continue on my way. So I mentioned that the car itself has uh, some changes that they made to the interface, to the UI on the screen. And it's a little different and it's harder to get to some of the functions that I wanted to get to. And I noticed that extensively when I was driving. And one time I wanted to record the, um, the screen, the, the, the dash cam. And I noticed that there's no button and I tried it a couple of different ways and I couldn't figure out how to record it. And what they tell you is push the button to actually um, do the voice recording and say record dash cam. And that would have been fine except for the fact that I was talking on the phone at that point. How would I do that? So it was kind of a weird little mix of, of things that happened. And so I was noticing these little things. And then I'd also noticed at one point when we stopped and restarted, I got this warning about the lane departure not working. It still worked, but it was telling me it didn't work, which I don't understand. It's kind of a weird thing that it was telling me it didn't work. Then at one point I wanted to turn the lights off and just finding the way to turn the lights off was hard. And one time I wanted to you know, wash the windshield um, and I couldn't remember how to turn the wipers on other than the single click and washing the windshield with that one single click. You know, stupid little things like that where you go, wait, what's the problem with this? There were just, you know, some quirky things. And while it's not Tesla specific, using the GPS was very helpful a couple of times because we were looking for like a place to go across to be on, the, be on A1A so we could actually see the launch a little bit better uh, from a little bit better view. So you have an angle at the, um, at the Space Center so you can actually see the launch as opposed to going out and being um, inland where you have tree lines and other things that impact you. So it was really helpful to, to use the GPS to kind of route me to somewhere and, uh, and get to there. So again, not specific to the Tesla, but really kind of nice to just be able to do that. I mean, you know, flying by the seat of your pants and my last car was, the, uh, was a minivan that had no available GPS or anything. I could use my phone sometimes, but you know, it was a little quirky to have to use the phone that way. So this was just, this was great. It was just telling me exactly where to go to get to where I wanted to go. As long as we just picked a destination and said, oh, I want to wind up on the beach over here and it would find the best way to get me there. It was pretty cool. So really re very nice, great trip. We had a great time. We got to see a lot, um, have a great experience. It was an adventure and I uh, just wanted to share that with you. However, that said about the maps, one thing I noticed is that sometimes the maps zoom in or zoom out kind of awkwardly. It used to actually be at a level where you could see the street view pretty easily as you slowed down and got off the highway the map would actually zoom in and show you a tighter view. For some reason, the map's not doing that right now. It stayed a larger view. So it was kind of hard to kind of figure out what the routing should be exactly without kind of pinching the map and pulling the map in some way, which was kind of weird. I had to do that. Why couldn't I just go ahead and do the, uh, why wouldn't the map auto zoom? It's kind of strange that way. And then also one other thing that I noticed, uh, a couple of times we got out of the car, we'd be listening to the radio, and I get back in the car and it would connect to Bluetooth automatically and bring the volume way up. And for whatever reason, <laughs> I, have the, um, I have the soundtrack to um, Frozen on my phone and I've had it on there for many years. And for some reason, it just started playing the Frozen soundtrack at top volume as soon as I'd get in the car, even though the last time I was in the car, I had the volume down and I was on the radio. So there's some quirky thing that was happening there with, this, with the software that was actually reconnecting to the phone and then bringing the volume up kind of strange, but it was uh, a little uh, jarring, I guess is the word I'd use a couple of times when I got in the car and I'm like, what the heck? You know, you had that moment where you're not sure why it's coming up louder all of a sudden and why it's not staying on the what I set it on when I last got out of the car. So again, minor details, but just those things where you just kind of have to sc scratch your head a little bit when something doesn't go exactly like you think it would uh, when you're getting in and out of the car. And then as I was kind of researching it over the last day or so, I found this tweet from Elon Musk that made me stop and shake my head a little bit. I'm like, wait, so you're telling me that the user is always wrong and the system is always right, when in fact that's not true. The supercharging message, the message about the, um, the lane departure, um, some of the other messages I've seen and things that it's done just seem quirky to me. And I don't think that's 100% right. And I still wanna be in control of my car. Look, I didn't have a destination in mind. I wanted to be in complete control of driving my car where I wanted to take it. 
and go to some place that I wanted to go. And you're telling me that I have to follow whatever it tells me to do. Hmm. I have some issues with that. You know, it's it's very subtle, but it's kind of a weird thing that they're doing in that sense, where it just feels like there's um there's something that doesn't quite ma match up to what I want to do. But that's just an observation. Overall, great trip. Really easy. We had a great time. We got to see the launch. We had some fun. It was very comfortable to drive. Um, the weather out was nice. It was a little cool that night, so you know, I had a coat with me that I left in the car. Oops. Um, when I went out to the beach to see the launch and you know that was so it was a little cold that at that moment but otherwise the temperature in the car was great never had any problems with anything we hit a little traffic a couple of times but nothing major that really slowed us up or had any issues um, adaptive cruise control would be a nice feature to have in the car but since they don't offer it without buying the autopilot you know you have to adjust accordingly so you manually adjust your speed from time to time but you know honestly Turning on and off the uh, off the autopilot anyway is so easy; it's really not a big deal. So it was fun to just go and have a have a good time and not really worry about anything. We just kind of went out and just uh, just had some fun. And uh, like I said, range anxiety didn't exist. The trip was fine. You know, finding superchargers was easy. Highly recommend this. Um, I think it wound up costing me. You know, it was, uh, I had to charge twice. I think it was around twenty dollars for the entirety of the charge, all, the whole thing. So I, I probably charged about a hundred percent of the battery give or take, um, between those two charges. So, you know, at 35 cents a kilowatt hour, that's, you know, the um, 60 kilowatt hour battery, you know, give or take was about 20 bucks. Not so bad, you know, tolls cost me more than that, honestly, um, just to go different places on some of the roads I was on. So not really, but you get the idea. You know, it really wasn't that big a deal. It wasn't that expensive to do it. So it was just fine. 